Welcome back again to Joe Stun of Boxing. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, we have George Cambosis and Devin Haney meeting at the weekend. I think in, in uh, UK time it's going to be on Sunday because um, of the time difference. It's in Australia at the Marvel Centre. Um, 50, 60,000 people are going to turn up, whatever it is. So obviously we need a little bit of a preview and a bit of a prediction. So let's have a little breakdown here. Um, you probably know about these two fighters already. Cambosis won his belts from Teofimo Lopez. Spectacular performance. Brilliant uh, game plan. Really, really made a believer out of me. And I think a lot of people as well. Mm. And um, I think people forget that, obviously with the benefit of hindsight, we can see that Lopez was not prepared mentally for Cambosis. He took him very, very lightly. He made a one-round prediction. He had the huge handicap of having his idiot father in the corner talking some of the worst, doing some of the worst corner work, if you can call it work, I've ever seen any cornerman do. That corner was an absolute shambles. And um, I always remember the, was it the 11th, between the 11th and 12th round, uh, Lopez with a huge gash across his eye, standing up facing the corner, didn't even sit down. And one of the corner men sort of loosely dabbing at the the uh, bad cut and making it worse. Blood flying everywhere, didn't even wipe him off. But we do forget that, that although Cambosis deserves immense credit for going all the way to America and winning those belts, Lopez took him lightly. Had it been a Lopez who fought Lomachenko and others, would it have been the same result? We'll never know. But it's a question worth pondering. Now, thankfully, Lope um, Cambosis wasn't robbed. Because another thing people forget is that was only a split decision. And clearly Cambosis won that fight, very clearly. Thank God he wasn't robbed. And if you look at if you go back a little bit further in his career, when he fought Lee Selby, I mean, I thought he won that fight conclusively. Um, I can't remember the score. I think I had it one, either 116, 112 or 115, 113. But, but I thought, I oh, know, he's, he's clearly won that. You know? And that was a split decision as well. And in the previous fight against Mick, uh, Mickey Bay, I think that was a split decision as well. So by the skin of his teeth, um, and I thought he beat Bay easily as well, but... Not easily, but he clearly won the fight. It wasn't a split decision. So Cambosis has, I'm, I'm tempted to use the word lucky, not in the sense that he's been gifted anything, because he hasn't, but lucky in the sense that he wasn't at least robbed once out of those last three fights. Now, what's interesting is that with Devin Haney, his last four fights have gone the distance, and they've all been 12-round decisions. Um, but they've all been unanimous decisions. Now, that hints, the fact that these guys go the distance does hint at a lack of power on, on behalf of both of them. With Cambosis, he's got a 50% knockout ratio, 20 wins, no defeats, 10 KOs. With Haney, 27 wins, no defeats, 15 KOs, which is just over 50%. So neither seems to be a big banger. Or at the very least, um, they don't go looking for the knockout, you know. Let's not forget, of course, Cambosis had Lopez on the floor in the first round. Haney scored knockdowns, but but neither is a banger. So that, that, that in itself, that's the first thing that suggests a distance fight. Um, in Haney's case, I think if you look at those, his previous um, opponents, last time out it was Joseph Diaz, unanimous decision. No argument there. I think I did 118, 110 or something, 117, 111. Um, prior to that, there was the Jorge Linares fight and, and everyone dwells upon the fact that Haney got, got stung at the end of the 11th round and was shaken very badly, wobbly. But he didn't hit the floor. And in the last round, he sort of fiddled his way through it and, and ended up winning, winning a decision, a deserved decision. But nevertheless... People are saying, well, he, he, looked, he looked out on his feet when Lenaro's clocked him. And just as well, it was at the end of the 11th round. Well, that may be true, but he didn't hit the floor. And it was a very good punch. So I, I think it's... And in the last round, he did grab and hold and 
you know, like I say, managed to have the nous to to hang on when hurt. So that kind of hints, I don't think it hints at a bad chin. I think people are perhaps overreacting to that, that one incident. Um, and let's not also forget that despite knocking two female Lopez over in the first round, it was at the 10th when Lopez put uh, Cambosis on the floor. Uh, and to his credit, Cambosis got up and then retook control of the fight. I mean, yeah, you know, but both these guys can be stung. It's, I guess it's true of anyone. If you hit them cleanly, they can be stung. Um, stylistically, I think one thing that's interesting is that Devin Haney in recent fights has been more on the front foot. He's He seems to have it in his head that he wants to be more aggressive. Um, and he's had a lot of success. He's he is very, he has been very aggressive in his recent fights and he's been quite a busy fighter. He's thrown lots of punches. Um, he seems to, to have increased his output and not turned himself into a banger, but moved less, moved backwards, moved side to side less, wants to get a bit more involved. Now, I think that would be a mistake against Cambosis because Cambosis likes the counter punching style. Against Lopez, he was he was doing it all fight, all for into the entire thirty six minutes. He was looking to counter. I think if Haney goes forward too much and tries to be too aggressive, I think that works in the Cambosis's hands, because Cambosis against Lopez controlled the range absolutely brilliantly. It was just out of out of the range on the periphery of it, and then Lopez would come forward and uh, Cambosis would would pounce with a counter. If Haney falls into the trap of constantly moving forward, 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 trying to close the gap in a kind of reckless manner by throwing lots of punches, as he has been doing in the last two or three fights I've seen of him, I think that will suit Cambosis' counter-punching style. I think what Haney needs to do is, I think, I think there needs to be a battle of the jabs here. I think Haney needs to make it a battle of the jabs because Haney's got a very good jab. I don't think Cambosis would be too keen on a jabbing match with Haney. Um, I don't think Haney needs to have any concern whatsoever for making this an entertaining fight. If he wins ugly, if he wins boring, that's fine for him. Uh, and likewise, I don't think Cambosis in front of his Australian fans, 50,000, 60,000. I hope he hasn't got it in his head that he's got to entertain them. Because if you start thinking in those terms... Game plans can be, can become a secondary consideration, and I think that would be a bad mistake. So I think there's a possibility this won't be that entertaining a fight, which is a shame because it's a great matchup. But but I do think there's a ch also a chance that if someone lands something heavy, if someone if one of the fighters gets stung. It could develop into a, not a slugfest, but more of an up close and personal fight, more of a fight, should we say? And I think Cambosis may have it on his mind that he's in front of his own his own fans. He's a very proud man, proud you know Greek Aussie, proud of his heritage. And I think if he was let's let's say he was being outboxed by Haney, I think he would want to get stuck in and. Try to un try to um, unnerve Haney. Try something different. I think Haney will. Haney's best bet is to, as I say, stick everything off the jab, make it kind of dull, a bit frustrating. Then maybe once you've got once you're controlling the range, you hang everything off the jab. Both these guys are, guys are orthodox fighters. Um, and try and frustrate early on. Try and frustrate Cambosis. Um, don't move. Don't be too aggressive. Don't give him too many uh, opportunities to counter punch. Kind of yeah, frustrate him. Frustrate him. In Cambosis for Cambosis, if he can't draw Haney's sting like he drew Lopez's sting, he's going to have to come to a plan B. Because if this becomes a pure boxing match, a pure jab fest, I see Haney winning this fight. But if 
Lopez, uh, if uh, Cambosis can be a bit more aggressive, intelligent aggression, maybe take the odd gamble. Body work shouldn't be neglected either. There should be lots of punches to the body, I think, from both men. Put that money in the bank. Of course, you've got to you got to think intelligently. You got to you can't you know you got to be up close to land the, the body to land some decent body punches. But I just see this being a chess match for a while, and I think, like I say, Devin Haney, I think needs to stay behind that jab, make it a little bit frustrating, maybe a little bit dull. Don't give, don't be too aggressive. Don't let Cambosis look for the counters. And I think possibly we'll see a fight where after six rounds, Haney is ahead and then Cambosis is forced to gamble, to move in quicker, to jump in maybe, to, to maybe take a couple, to land a couple and try and, uh, try and unnerve physically and mentally Devin Haney. Can he do it? I think probably the first half of this fight will belong to Haney and the second half will belong to Cambosis. This is a very, very difficult fight to predict because there are so many intangibles, so many different possible styles. But bearing in mind all things considered with it being in Australia and so on, I'm going to say that George Cambosis Jr. will win a close possibly debatable, maybe controversial decision over a very, very skillful game, Devin Haney. I just think Cambosis might nick it. Um, and I think they'll, this is for the undisputed lightweight title. Uh, Cambosis has the WBA, WBO and IBF titles and Haney has the WBC title. I think that a rematch would be in order. I don't. I think yeah, it might be might be controversial. It certainly be debatable, but I see Cambosis winning a points decision here, um, and Haney probably saying, "Well, I don't agree with that decision at all." And I hope what we don't see, and I don't think we are going to see this, but I hope we don't see one guy dominating throughout the entire fight, and then losing a decision. You know, which it would just be appalling if that happened. So let's say that Haney wins nine of the 12 rounds clearly and then loses a decision. I don't think it will be that. I don't think we will see that type of fight. I think, we'll, like I say, I think we'll see Haney controlling the first six rounds, more or less, and then Cambosis coming into the fight later on, maybe pulling out down the stretch. So in the last four rounds, causing Haney a lot of problems, a bit of a fight breaks out, you know, rather than the old the chess match. And winning a close decision. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I don't know. This is a very difficult fight to predict. But what do you think? What's your opinion? What's your opinion on both these fighters? Who do you think is going to win? Um, could go either way, couldn't it? But you tell me. You tell me. Leave your comments below. Thank you for uh, watching this video. As always, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good fight. We'll speak soon. As always, take care. Much love to you all.